What's up guys, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. In the last episode we completed the first area of the Tower of the Gods and in this area we have these two statues that we need to pick up and there's an enemy in the middle of the room that shoots lasers at us so if we time this correctly we can get past here without too big of a problem. There we go, we got the first statue and let's go ahead and put him on the first switch and let's run back and grab the second statue without getting burned by that laser enemy. I don't actually know what those things are called. So if you do know, and you want to post it in the comments, then uh, feel free to. Hopefully we don't get hit by the laser. Sweet, we made it past there. Good, 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 good. And wh how does that not register as on the switch? Whatever, let's, uh, there you go. Get on the switch, and then let's hit the third and final switch. And that will activate these platforms, which we can now get to, which will lead us to a different area in the dungeon. So, let's just uh, wait for this guy to come down here and... Curse you, rat! Well, I'm not going back for those rupees, so <laughs> I'm just leaving them there. I am not wasting time going back for those rupees, because we have a lot to do in this episode, and I really would like to accomplish uh, most of it, most of what I have planned in here. So, let's go ahead and do this. In this area, we got to go over to the right and go in this door, and hopefully in this episode we can pick up the dungeon item. I would love to do that. Hopefully, that's what I'm planning at least, so let's just get rid of this annoying electric chew and jump on here. And over there, as you can see, there's another eyeball that we can hit when once we get the uh, dungeon item, but we probably won't go back for that because that all that leads to is an area where you fight a uh, dark nut and get a joy pendant. So it is not useful, or it's just pretty much a waste of time. Basically, that sign says if you walk up to here and press R, you can call this statue uh, down from this like pillar or whatever and now it will follow you so this is a very uh, interesting puzzle mechanic they have in Zelda so you got to um you have to make sure this guy follows you around this uh, corkscrewy like uh, path here and got to make sure you take you know wide turns and stuff so he doesn't fall off the edge and you got to make sure that you don't go too fast because if you get out of this dude's like uh, I guess range of sight or something he'll just stand there until you come back so you got to take it slow and you got to make sure that it doesn't fall off in the, uh, the pits and once he gets over to this side, you can pick him up and run across this gap and then bring him into the room back over here. And then you gotta wait for these platforms to come back again and hopefully we can avoid those things and get that chew to commit suicide. <laughs> what a stupid chew. That's what you get for being such a worthless enemy. I hate you, chew. I hate you. Alright, so let's put this dude back into this, or let's bring this guy back into this room and he's gonna go stand on this pillar over here. And we're going to get something from that. <laughs> so let's just wait and see what we get. And what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it? And I wonder what that could be. It definitely doesn't look like anything that we haven't seen before. Especially not that thing on Dragon Roost where we learned a new, like, uh, you know, melody or whatnot. So anyways, let's pull out the Wind Waker and see what this thing has. It's going to teach us a new song that we can learn on the Wind Waker which is the command melody and I'll explain more about it once we get into actually using it so let's go ahead and perform said command melody that way we can learn it and then use it and this is going to be used a lot in the game not only in this dungeon but in future dungeons to come so it is definitely worth learning and uh, learning well since we're gonna be using it a lot my kin wait beyond the doors control them and guard them to their places of truth to open the path to the gods alright could you be any more cryptic statue? <laughs> but no, basically there's um there's three other statues like him that we need to get and bring into this room. And the next of which is over to I believe this would be the left of the door that we originally walked in. So let's go in here and whip out our grappling hook. Again, since it's uh it hasn't been used a lot recently, I don't think so. Curse you, you stupid fire bubble. No one likes you. I'm getting you out of here, man. No, no, stop lighting me on fire. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Alright, whip out the grappling hook and grab onto this thing. And hopefully we can be able to swing across and not get hit by that other fire bubble. And of course we didn't. We're on fire now. That's fantastic. Awesome. Alright, well in this room, this is one of the first instances of a puzzle using the command melody. And trust me, they get a lot harder than uh, this puzzle right here. This puzzle is pretty one of the simple ones. They have a lot of creative puzzles that use the command melody, especially uh, later on in the game. So, it's going to be a blast using all of those, that's for sure. <laughs> Alright, let's get this guy off the statue, and then walk Link over to this little button here. Stand on here, and it will activate the Rainbow Bridge of Happiness. 
And then if we pull out the Wind Waker, we can perform the Command Melody, which will let us take control of the, uh, the little statue guy. Because that's what the Command Melody basically does. It allows you to take control of certain inanimate objects and later on other things. <laughs> and we'll get into what those other things exactly are at a much later date without spoiling too much of the storyline slash game. So once you get over the other side, press R to return to Link. And actually a funny story about this is I had a lot of trouble with this uh, room on my first playthrough of this game like ever. Because I forgot this grappling hook like uh, thing was up here. So I got trapped on the other side of the room and it took me like a good like 15 minutes to figure out how I got to how I could get back to this side without the uh, <laughs> without the like the bridge and whatnot. But after you get out, put the uh, statue on that little button right there and let's hopefully get this stupid fire bubble out of the way because I don't want to deal with him. So let's see if we can get his attention. And shut up, King of Red Lions. I would rather not talk to you right now. And, all right, screw it. We're not getting this guy's attention. He's obviously too good for us. And you know what? I'm okay with Oh, now you want to play. Now you want to play. Well, you know what? You're dead now. That's what you get. Well, you were going to die either way regardless. So I guess it's better that you died that way. Anyways, let's hook onto here and let's go this way. And this is actually, I believe, where we go to get the dungeon item and fight the mini boss of this dungeon. So I'm super excited to get the dungeon item. I cannot wait. It's my favorite item in this game. And I love it to death. Despite me being really bad at using it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, something I should mention though is I'm actually using my new mic to record this. So if you haven't watched the... Uh, the Sonic LP, yeah, I bought the new mic and I used it in the most recent episode of that, which I believe was episode 8. So yeah, I'm testing it out again in here with Wind Waker and uh, hopefully it'll all go well. And basically this is a Dark Knight, that's the official name of these enemies. And what you want to do is you want to lock onto them and you want to parry their attack, which for some reason it's not letting me do. Um, hey dude, come on, let me parry your attack. I mean, uh, that'd be nice. What the heck, dude? Why, why is it not giving me the parry command? What the heck? Oh, there we go. Alright, I guess I had to pull out my sword or something. But alright, you want to parry them, go around them, and I didn't really want to take off his helmet, but I ended up taking off his helmet and his armor. So once that's done, you can use your grappling hook to get the, uh... Actually, you need to stun him in order to use the grappling hook, but I believe these guys drop a, uh, Knight's Crest no matter what, and hopefully I don't die here, because that would be very embarrassing if I died to a Dark Knight, because these guys are not that hard to do, actually. Let's see if we can get it there. There we go, I got the Knight's Crest that time, so now I'm just free to go and slash him up as much as I want. Because he can't do anything. And now that his sword is completely gone, he's pretty much useless. Although he can punch and uh, kick you, I believe. But he's not too much of a bad guy to deal with. You just gotta kinda just get him into a corner, and then you can beat him up as much as you possibly want. And he is actually doing a lot of damage to me, surprisingly. Usually those guys aren't that tough to kill, but he's down regardless. So hey, look at that. And we got a double Zelda chime all the way across the room as it revealed that the door is open and we got a treasure chest and Link is feeling a little bit weary just because of how bad I was doing on that mini boss but yeah so anyways the cool thing you can do is actually pick up not why did I <laughs> I did not mean to throw that Link pick that back up pick it up alright and a cool thing you can do is pick up the sword and swing it at these giant pillars and usually they will break revealing uh, things like rupees hearts or other such goodies so hopefully we can get something cool from that. We got a heart and... Oh, wow. The other two got destroyed in the middle of the fight. So, well, we only got a heart and nothing. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and open up this chest and see what we got here going on. All right. The hero's bow. The dungeon I'm adding for this uh, dungeon. And it's, uh, as you all know, my favorite dungeon or my favorite item in this game. And it gives you 30 arrows to start off with. So that's a very nice, very nice. <laughs> Alright, and in this room is where we're actually going to have to be using our dungeon item for the first time. And those fire bubbles come back even though I killed them before. That's fantastic. You guys should have just stayed dead. Alright, uh, let's see if I can get this my first time. The bow. Oh wow, I actually got it the first time. Sweet. I am not good at aiming the bow. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not something that I pride myself in. It, I am very bad at it. As you can clearly tell right now, I'm failing to hit these stupid things. But hopefully, hopefully I can learn this a little bit better. Come on. Come on now. Let's get this fire bubble. I really need to actually kill this guy. All right, there we go. That only took me nine arrows to do. Not too bad. You're kidding me? That's awful. That's completely bad. <laughs> that is like the definition of bad. All right, so... 
let's go ahead and grab this statue and bring it to the uh, the hub of the second floor of this dungeon. That way we can uh, continue on with our journey. There's a few things that we can go back and grab. Now that we have the hero's bow, there's a few secrets that we can get. One of them is just a joy pendant, and one of them is something that we're actually going to go back and get. Because I, I don't believe that I'm going to go back and get the joy pendant. It's honestly just a giant waste of time, and not really worth it since I already showed off the joy pendant uh, grinding uh, method. And we've already pretty much completed the joy pendant side quest with uh, all 60 joy pendants and the cabana deed gotten. So I see no need to go ahead and show that off. But what we will do is we will go back to the first floor of this dungeon and um, we will go to the compass room and get something that was in there. I remember in the last episode I pointed out that there was an eyeball in there that we can show off. So let's go ahead and go down there and do that. And I think I can just jump down here and I'll be fine, right? Yep, alright, that works. Well, okay, that almost worked had that laser guy not been a jerk face and decided he wants to kill me. Alright, so we're back in the room where I originally got the compass. There's that fire bubble there again. We're going to take him out because I have no need for him to be here. Alright, so you take him out. You whip out your uh, your bow and arrows. And apparently I didn't kill him, but screw him anyways. I love how he's just like in the middle of the cutscene. But anyways, behind that area, there is a treasure chest which we can go and grab now. And you know what? Let's just grab it while we're on fire for the lols because it looks funny. Unfortunately, the fire went out before we actually had to pan around, but whatever. In this treasure chest, we have a treasure chart. So that is very nice. That is one of the two charts in this dungeon that we will be picking up. So, without further ado, I believe it is a good time to end off the episode. We have the dungeon item, we got the treasure chart, and now we have those enemies attacking us for no reason. So, once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker.